Now, unlike Phil, I don't have a, the next one I'm going to tie is a sort of different kind of bead emerger. It's got a glass bead, but I don't have a, a picture or a, a video of it, but I've got a, a still shot. And I'll hold that up, but I'll pass it around too, because it's important to sort of understand how this pattern works. And I've got two versions of the fly. I'm going to, uh, I can tie a simpler one or a more difficult one. The more difficult one's the, the most complicated fly I tie. And I doubt that you can see this from here, but I'll pass it around. Oh, yeah. Oh, monsters. The, yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Uh, th these were stomach samples. That is amazing. Uh, the fly on top, you can see that that wing case is just bulging out, but the fly on the bottom, the natural on the bottom is pretty amazing because the wings are just popping and when we actually took, before we took the picture, that just looked like a little silver ball. And uh, that's those floating nymphs we were talking about earlier. That's one of the reasons those trout like that fly. The other thing to notice on this fly is see that kind of gas toward the, uh, where it's pulling out of the shuck. Which way am I going to go? Yeah, you can, toward that end. Yeah, uh, and I'm going to try to incorporate a lot of that into the pattern. Thank you. I'm going to start my thread, maybe a, a hook eye distance back on the front. <coughs> Now the interesting thing about this particular pattern is that it, I use a, a silver line glass bead, but the, the bead's going to be mounted on top of the hook rather than through the hook. And I'll show you how that works. All you really need to, to do that is some uh, dental floss, unwaxed dental floss. If you mess up the pattern, you can clean your teeth. <laughs> And, if you, and, and any other patterns that if you mess up tying them, uh, they just become cripples. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got a whole box full of cri special cripple patterns. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some small size Spirit River silver lined glass beads. I, they have a special, and I can tell you the, they call them highlight glass beads quicksilver but there's, it's a silver-lined glass bead. And I'm using a small size. Uh, you can sit around and just thread a few of them on a strand of that dental floss. Once again, unwaxed. And... Well, what size of bead is it? It's a, it, well, they're just called, uh, it's a small size. I don't know what size it is in terms of, of they call it a small bead. Yeah. The seed bead, I think they call it. That's their small one, I think, a seed bead. I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. Like that. Uh, yeah, you'll have, it, it might be a seed bead, maybe a little bigger. Anyhow, uh, you pull them up on this uh, dental floss. And then I'm going to fold the floss over, and I'll show you that in a minute, like so. Now I'm going to put that floss <coughs> on top of the hook. And this kind of represents that little bubble. Uh, I don't know what it is, but I guess maybe the trout haven't seen it as much. Uh, and uh, I've, I've been doing pretty good on these things for, well, since I figured it out two or three years ago. I didn't come up with the dental floss thing. Uh, there was a guy down on the San Juan River who I think was the first to, uh, to come up with this idea on, on midge patterns. Uh, I'll remember his name about 3 o'clock this morning. Uh, and I'll call all of you. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's a little bit different, and it's not that hard to do. If you try to do it with wire, I've, I've, people try to do it with putting thread through with a needle. This is a real fast, efficient way. You can take care of it 
in no time at all and you're ready to go uh, once you get those beads on the floss. <laughs> now I'm going to wrap the thread down to near past the hook and I'm going to turn the hook a little bit so that I can work down that area because I'm going to tie some tails on this basically like that photo we, we looked at and I'm going to separate tails since this is a big hook I'm going to have two on each side and these are the synthetic tailing fibers whatever brands you like and I'm going to take four of them and divide two on each side Make sure I've got four there. I think I might have five. That's pretty good. Make these fairly short. And this is pretty much superfluous. This is just what fly tires get into in the winter time. The fly would work without all this junk, probably. <laughs> uh, Well, how many people have caught a brook trout on, on just a hook? That's true. Now I'm baiting them with my fingernail. I'm going to come up the two closest to me, come up between them, go over the top of the hook shank with my thread, keeping it loose. As soon as I get under the bottom of the shank, I can tighten it. And that's locked in. It's not going anywhere. Now I'm going to go to the opposite side same thing as soon as I get under the hook shank and come up I can tighten it and they'll pretty much stay where I want that one's separated a bit but I might be able to it's a cripple <laughs> you know how that is yeah, I don't know what happened with that separated a little but now I'm going to put a, a small copper, or I'm going to use small gauge copper rib, copper wire, ultra wire. What did we do before there was ultra wire? Once again, I'm tying this for the better part of the length of the hook just to keep the the uh, fly consistent underneath now because we saw that when when I showed you that photo you noticed that little section of sort of silvery looking uh, bubble where where the insect was pulling out of the shock I'm going to tie a little tag section of holographic flashaboo uh, Obviously, that's, I, I think that a lot of the tags you saw on the old flies, that's what the tag was all about on, on some of the wet flies and all. Only need a wrap or two of this. So that's tied in. Oops. Just enough. I don't know if that triggers anything, but it makes it a little bit authentic, a little more authentic. So I've got that in. Now I'm going to, I've got some olive dyed uh, pheasant tail one of the magic natural materials. I'm going to take a couple strands or, uh, of that and uh, make use it for a body. And on this pattern, since you're not fooling around with any tails or anything like that on it, uh, it's easy enough to, uh, you can just cut the tips off which tend to be fragile and break and start it that away. Oops.
I'm going to tie right back down to where I have that tag and then I'm going to change the attitude of the hook. Wrap forward, and I'm going to leave room for a thorax and a little stub of a wing. Now I'm going to reverse wrap this wire, and since I hadn't heard Phil's thing yet, I'm going to reverse wrap it and tie it in that. Uh, the old way, which that was a great tip this morning. And I'm tying it over the tag because if you on the photo it kind of looks like that and it does in real life too. Come forward. Tie this off. break the, the wire. If you break the wire, a lot of times uh, you're not going to get that tag in that you have to worry about crimping down or something like that. Then I'm going to take, because this is uh, an actual glass bead, uh, it'll sink pretty quick. Uh, the other pattern I have is designed to make it sink. I want this to hang a little bit longer in the surface film. I used to just put a, a real sparse parachute hackle uh, around the, the fly and I could even trim some off uh, some of the hackle off to make it sort of sink real slow uh, but now I just use uh, this hairline uh, parapost and I just tie in a, a stubby wing and that keeps it up uh, long enough. I, I think that on the photo I showed you a lot of times these fish these things get washed under uh, and once again the fish are taking them below the surface but any semi-emerged uh, uh, emerger, I mean, where they're not quite a done yet, I think they're real targets for the trout. So I'm going to tie that wing in, and then I'll finish it off with some uh, ice stub peacock. Fold this material over the over the your thread. Just wrap it in, and then we'll trim that to size once I've... Would, would poly work for that kind of stuff? Yeah, poly works. The reason I use that, uh, uh, that uh, parapost is that they, they silicone out. They put silicone on it and floats it even better. Okay. Uh, and that's the only reason. But fly this size, I don't think you have to get too picky on, on that. Okay, and I used to do this with uh, natural peacock, but now I, uh, I use this ice dub stuff just because it's a little flashier, and frankly, I think it's a little easier to work with uh, on a fly like this. Once again, if you have to make a mistake, overdub, uh, a thorax, although on this a lot of times you'll lose some of this in the process of uh, wrapping so it doesn't end up as thick as you thought. One or two wraps behind. One in front which will settle that wing down. And that's basically represents a wing bud and then hold the bead up a little bit and a couple of wraps in front. <coughs> and that about does it. Get my whip finisher. One thing I didn't say on the other fly is I do uh, I don't use uh, head cement on this because you end up 
pretty much closing all the hook eyes. But what I'll do is I just took three whip finishes and whip finished it off and then I'll take two or three more and it's very seldom that you're going to have that fail. Uh, and these patterns are pretty easy to tie. You just tie a couple extras if they fall apart after a, a few fish. And that's kind of what there is to it. <laughs>